Continuing on with the trade and market management discussion, the next subtopic and one that is extremely important is monetary goals. Now, some of this may seem counterintuitive at first, but I think you'll get the point as I run through the reasons why I don't necessarily want anybody to have monetary goals. And a lot of people would say, we're supposed to have goals. We're taught from the time we're kids that we should have goals and achieve those goals. And that's not what I'm saying. We have to have goals. But the way that we look at monetary goals in trading becomes, from my experience, counterproductive. Over the years, I can't tell you how many times I've heard traders say, I want to make $300 a day, I want to make $500 a day. Whatever their number is, they begin each trading day with that goal in mind. From my experience, there's two primary areas where this goes off the rails. The first one has to do primarily with one of those days where you get in the hole right out of the gate. The first trade of the day is a losing trade. And we all know that that happens. And then we also know exactly what happens next. The demons take over and the thought process becomes, I have to get my money back and I have to get to my goal. And we start pressing. We start feeling the squeeze of time as the day goes along. And what does that lead to? And most traders should be able to relate to this because we've all done it at some point in time. We start changing our process. Some traders will invent trades out of thin air. They'll see something that's not really there. Their mind begins playing games with them. And those are the demons taking over. We lose focus on the real goal. The real goal is to only take the high probability trades as taught throughout this course and only take them as they become available. We let the market dictate to us when a trade should be taken and until and unless that happens, we sit on the sidelines and wait. This business is about patience, process, and discipline. You know what comes next when we begin inventing trades or we begin taking trades that we know we shouldn't take. Sometimes we even know it as we're taking the trade. And that's where hopium enters the mix. We begin trading on hopium. The one thing I can guarantee throughout the markets is traders who do that on a consistent basis are destined to fail. That's not what we're doing here. We're learning the proper way and we run our trading business as any other business with sound decisions and we only deploy our capital when we feel we have the odds in our favor of success. So with that, there is one monetary goal that I do want everybody to adhere to and practice with discipline and that's a daily loss limit. Traders have to get into the habit of establishing for themselves a daily maximum loss limit. Whatever that means to you, if it's $300, if it's $500, if it's $1,000, whatever that number is to you, you have to adhere to that with discipline. Sometimes it's just not going to happen that day. Let's not compound errors. Let's not compound mistakes. Let's not compound trades that just aren't working in our favor. Remember, you have to be able to come back to fight another day. We learn from our mistakes. Everything I'm telling you is as a result of all the mistakes that I've made over the years and subsequently developed my strategy, developed my processes and my discipline after finally realizing that this is a business that has to be treated like any other business. Once that revelation came to pass, everything changed. If I don't see a trade on a particular day, maybe it's a really quiet Friday, light volume, not a lot going on in the markets, the middle of the summertime, there's days like that. There may be days where you have no trades. That's okay. Don't create trades out of thin air. There's also one more aspect of having a monetary goal that I want to discuss, and that's the other side of it. Some traders will reach their goal, and they'll pack it in for the day, and they won't make another trade no matter what. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's a happy medium in there somewhere. So unless you have something else to do and you don't want to be in front of the screens and you really want to take advantage of the lifestyle that you've built for yourself through this trading business, that's one thing. But if you're around and you're watching the markets and you've had a good day, it's a good position to be in. The pressure's off. 
But at the same time, what happens if a trade setup occurs? It's too good of a setup to pass up. Maybe it's a 618 retracement into a prior support area. Happens to also be a former breakout area. So the market's coming back to retest the scene of the crime. Maybe there's a doji candle on the seventh candle. All the stars line up and you say, the probabilities are just in my favor. I have to take the trade. That goes right back to only taking trades that fit the criteria. And sometimes those are the ones that turn a good day into a great day. And sometimes they're the ones that happen in the afternoon when you least expect it. So let's not limit ourselves by having goals on both sides. We certainly don't need the demons and we certainly don't need to limit ourselves by reaching a monetary goal and packing it in. If you take the right trades at the right time for the right reasons, rest assured the money will take care of itself. The next item I want to discuss is what happens when we do have a losing trade and how that affects our mindset. What I want you to focus on is the next trade is not the last trade. Assuming that we had a loser on the last trade, we don't want to let it impact how we enter the next trade or even if we enter the next trade. The next trade doesn't know that we just lost the trade. Each trade has to stand on its own. Most of us know this one. We take a trade, we happen to have a losing trade, we look at the next trade setup that we like, but we're gun shy. We don't take the trade. You know what happens next. That's the big winner that we didn't take. We start pounding the desk, we're kicking ourselves, and guess what? Here come those demons again. When we have a losing trade, forget it. It's over. It's done with. The next time the trade setup that we're looking for occurs, we look at it, we treat it, and we manage it for that trade alone, which has nothing to do with the last trade we took. An analogy that comes to mind has to do with baseball. And if any of you have ever played baseball, then we know that striking out is part of the game. Everybody strikes out. It's going looking, had a bad swing, or got a bad call. It doesn't matter. It's over if they take it out in the field with them, meaning they're dwelling on it, into the next inning. Inevitably, what happens is the ball gets hit to them, and they make an error because they're still thinking about the strikeout from 20 minutes ago. In trading, don't think about the trade from 20 minutes ago. It doesn't matter. It's over. The next trade setup you see has nothing to do with it. Now, the next thing we've touched on a number of times throughout the course, but it's so important that I want to do it again. Did the reason for the trade change? This is where we don't want to trade on hopium. When a setup or a pattern no longer exists the same way it did when we took the trade, we have to be fair to ourselves and move out of the trade. This is where, and mark my words, your first loss is your best loss. I can't tell you how many times I've heard traders say over the years, well, I think it'll come back. You know that one. We've all said that. We've all thought that. We're in a trade. The market's going against us. We're on the long side and it's going down. And then in our mind, we make up a reason why we think it's going to come back and dig us out of the hole. And you know what? It might sometimes. But you know what? The majority of the time, it doesn't. And we end up taking a much bigger loss than we would have taken had we got out when the reason for the trade changed. All these items are part of how a trader matures with experience. And you know what the one thing that experienced traders have over those with less experience or those just starting out is the experienced trader has learned how to lose. It's a very interesting way to look at taking a loss, but if you think about it, once you learn and accept the fact that the large majority of the time, the cut and run is the best option you have. Once you learn that, then you've learned how to lose because you've accepted the fact that that's going to happen and when you see it unfolding in front of your eyes, you're out of the trade. You've learned how to lose. Nobody wants to lose, but since we're going to have to lose at times, you want to lose small and fast. There's a couple of more items willing to lose. And I'm not suggesting you're going to lose an entire position if you're allocating, for example, 
10, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars into a stock trade that's a scalp trade or a day trade. I'm not suggesting that you have to be willing to lose thirty thousand dollars. That's not the case, but you have to be willing to take a loss. If your maximum loss is some number, 500, 300, 800, whatever it is to you, if you're not willing to take that loss, then don't take the trade or alter your position size. This ties right back to the emotional part of trading and the demons. If a trader can't stomach a $500 loss on a trade, then he or she is either trading too large of a position size or they frankly don't have the adequate capital to be in the business yet. There's no magic bullet with position sizes, capital, how much we're willing or not willing to lose. Those are individual decisions that each trader has to and must make by themselves. I get asked sometimes, how much money should I open an account with? How much should I put towards each trade? How many contracts should I trade? How many shares should I trade? Those are difficult decisions for me to help you make. You have to make those decisions by yourself. Everybody has a different personal financial situation and you have to create your own plan, your own process, and your own risk parameters around you and your financial situation. One thing I can tell you is whatever your financial situation is today, if you have the desire and the discipline and you apply the rules and the principles taught throughout this course and you do it methodically and only take the highest probability trades on the board and you put everything we've discussed into practice then your financial situation is going to improve as time goes on but this is a marathon it's not a sprint if you treat it as a sprint you're gonna run out of gas fast if you treat it as a marathon and pace yourself then you'll begin to realize over time the power of compounding and how that impacts in a positive way your financial situation. This is one of the reasons why this is the best business in the world. Along with shares of a stock or whatever the number is, the process doesn't change. You're doing the same thing as if you were trading 10 contracts or a thousand shares of stock. The process doesn't change. The probabilities on the trades don't change. The principles don't change. But the money changes. As your account grows, you'll be able to exponentially make more per trade and that'll only continue over time. And that, my friends, is how success is realized in this business.